several. It shows that the legislature was concerned with not just isolated instances, but you can see it's a little bit like when I go down to the floor of the House or the Senate. You see that there's all so happy to see you down there. I just want to make sure that you recognize that they're there. Chief Lefcourt might be called into action at any moment on that one. Right there, he's right there. The first is SD 635. The only reason I'm going to go through these is not everybody may be familiar with each of these, and I want to give you the full spectrum of what the legislative activity has been. 635 protects law enforcement animals as they perform their duties. This is a definition of a law enforcement animal to the penal code to see to it that those service dogs that include law enforcement animals. It may seem to everybody, well, isn't that a matter of course, or wasn't that already in existence? And the fact was the answer was no. And so that recognition is there today. I think that's extraordinarily important. SB 328 allows for pet deposits to increase rental options for tenants with pets. One of the things that's taking place, as we all know in society, is the aging of society. At my birthday today, please don't remind me. Just in case, I brought it up earlier today. Somebody said to me, oh, well, that's okay. 75 is the new 40, and I'm here to tell you it is not. But nonetheless, in terms of enthusiasm, I think it's still there. And enthusiasm for this bill. This bill is very, very important, the pet deposit bill, for a very simple reason. Within a decade or so, fully one-third of our population will be 60 plus, 60 years old plus, especially for those who understand the role of companionship as we age. We all know for kids, for families, for ourselves, before we reach our senior years, yes, that may be a given. But particularly for those in assisted living areas, those who may be leaving other homes and moving into apartments, perhaps with a little less space to have to take care of, having a companion, particularly a dog or a cat, is something that can be very, very precious in terms of quality of life. And so what this does is it allows a pet deposit, along with any other kind of deposit, to give landlords and boards of directors for condominium projects and other kinds of associations the possibility to enter rental agreements then that will take the pet deposits into account and allow for these security deposits to assist with the idea of more people being able to be pet owners and to rent. So landlords will be compensated for any damage done to a rental unit by a pet animal, and I think we all know that it's not the pet animals that are the problems when it comes to rentals. The two-legged variety are still the chief culprits in that concern. So then S-235, HB 235, excuse me, this assists the Humane Society in the care of animals previously subject to the animal cruelty. It amends the definition of victim in the victim restitution law to duly incorporate humane societies for the purposes of receiving restitution. I think that speaks for itself. We all know what happened with the puppy mills. We all know that the senators and representatives are sitting here today because they were responding to that situation, which unfortunately has repeated itself. It would be one thing if it was just an isolated circumstance, but it hasn't been and it won't be until this kind of legislation is signed and put into effect. The Humane Society and or any other individual organization who is willing to step forward into those kinds of circumstances deserves and needs to have compensation and restitution, and this bill assures it. SB 6 prohibits the use of steel-jawed leg hold traps. This has to do with animal cruelty offenses. It requires dogs that are captured or killed in a snare or trap to be reported to 
County Animal Control Officer, this is in the area of cruelty, uh, and I think that this, the way it is written, I think it can be effectively enforced, and, uh, and I think it, it, it covers the situation uh, that uh, is otherwise, as otherwise up to now, uh, been left in limbo. SB 9 keeps pets out of the hands of those found guilty of animal cruelty. I don't see the slightest reason on earth to have, uh, speaking of, as a former probation officer myself, there are some people that uh, just need to be put away, I can assure you that, uh, away from the rest of society, and there are those people who need to be kept uh, from uh, uh, care and, uh, and uh, responsibility uh, for animals, uh, and that is determined uh, by their actions and the actions have consequences and we want uh, those who may be contemplating uh, treating this as a, a business uh, uh, expense or uh, uh, having the wrong attitude with respect to what constitutes the business that they are going to not going to be able to uh, uh, think this is baseball where you get three strikes uh, in this particular instance uh, you, you, you don't get past that first strike uh, persons convicted of cruelty to animals in the first degree will be prevented from possessing any pet animal or equine animal, which is just as important, for a minimum of five years from the uh, conviction date. Uh, then uh, SB 978, uh, again, for those found guilty of animal cr uh, pr uh, uh, cruelty, it prohibits sentencing to probation if the defendant is convicted of cruelty to animals in the first or second degree where the crime involves 10 or more pet animals. There's a reason for that. It's not that we're not concerned with nine or eight or seven or the, or, or the, uh, the, the cruelty to a single uh, animal. The, this uh, is a direct reference for those people who are engaged in puppy mill uh, activity uh, and are indifferent to the fate of the, the puppies that, uh, or the animals that, that they have responsibility for. And so this is clearly directed at those who have, are engaged in what we consider a criminal enterprise and what the legislature considers a criminal enterprise. Uh, and also makes an offense of cruelty to animals in the second degree involving 10 or more animals in any one instance a Class C felony. Let the word go forth uh, from today with this signing that the legislature means it, uh, this administration means it, uh, the supporters who are here today mean it, uh, when we say this is a serious crime, it is criminal action and is going to be treated accordingly. A felony uh, accusation and a felony conviction is deadly serious business. And uh, anybody who is contemplating uh, anything less than that better think more than twice. So in conclusion, let me say these bills, uh, I believe, rightfully hold those who abuse pets accountable for their actions. They're passed, and I think I can speak for the legislators here assembled, and I think I can speak for everyone here when I say animal issues are people issues. They are not separate uh, uh, from us in terms of responsibility and obligations. So these bills, I think, as in, in summary, protect uh, law enforcement animals. They expand the rental options for tenants with pets. They help groups like the Hawaiian Humane Society receive restitution when they care for animals who, are, who have been subject to abuse and cruelty. They prohibit cruel, cruel traps from being used, and they stiffen the penalties against those who are found guilty of animal cruelty. I'd say that was one hell of a package that just passed, and I want to, again, thank those legislators who made it all possible. And as I sign, as I sign these bills, then I also want to, to thank those who made it possible by coming to testify, by getting the, the, uh, the, the, the right information to the legislators, by putting it together in a rational and reasonable way. Uh, these are emotional issues, but, but the, the, the legislation is the result of testimony, yes, that may be motivated by our concerns, but was drafted with the idea of making certain uh, that we zero in on what it is that we want to alleviate, what we, where we want to help, and where we want to uh, prosecute and punish. So I'm going to ask uh, 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 all the legislators and, and Keith to come up and, and ask Pamela and Inga, representing everyone else if they would, uh, to come up as well uh, to represent uh, all, all everybody else who's assembled here today.
Senator Heath. Thank you, Governor. Uh, I, I just want to thank uh, Inga Gibson. Uh, she doesn't get enough credit. Um, um, and the reason I want to thank her is I expect that uh, somewhere around December she, the phone will start ringing and there'll be a, another list of issues that she'll raise. And she has been the one consistent voice when. Uh, pressure was brought to bear uh, on the committees, and she looked. Uh, she looked pressure right in the eye and stared it right back. Uh, Keith Kaneshiro, without a prosecutor, uh, who's uh, uh, s such a strong supporter of animals, uh, some of the bills may not have become uh, law. And then finally, I want to thank Carl Rhodes because, uh, just like the shark finning bill, where uh, Rep. McKelvey was critically important in pushing it through. These bills would not be possible without the support and active engagement of the, uh, the House Judiciary Chair. So thank you, thank you all for giving us the opportunity. Uh, there's one bill that I know is, is deep in the heart of Ginny Teal, and that's the ear docking bill. And we'll try again, Ginny. <laughs> she makes very... She makes very sad eyes, uh, like a basset hound, wondering why, why. And so we're going to try again for you, Ginny. All right. Thank you, Governor. Thank you all so much. Um, I just wanted to comment on um, how fortunate we are here in Hawaii to have uh, such tremendous leadership and compassion, um, not only from our state legislature, but as many of you know, we worked with uh, Governor Abercrombie for many years in Congress, and he was a champion of many of our issues, including the, the Shark Protection Act, so we're very fortunate. Um, obviously, none of this could have been accomplished without uh, the leadership and foresight of, of Senator He and Brett McKelvey and uh, Chair Rhodes and Senator Asparo and, and so many others. Um, uh, the snare bill, obviously, we couldn't have done it without the support of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, the Nature Conservancy, the Pet Deposit Bill, the Hawaii Association of Realtors, uh, so many other organizations across the state uh, that we work with, Equine 808, Oahu SPCA, um, we have Hawaii Cat Foundation, so many of the, the smaller groups that, that may not be um, out uh, in front of the camera as much, but do so much tremendous work um, to help animals directly, but also to support the policy efforts. So I just want to thank um, everyone in the animal welfare community, especially our, our neighbor island um, supporters and partners that have made this possible. And hopefully um, next year we'll, I don't know, this is a hard year to talk, but <laughs> hopefully next year we'll have uh, an even better outcome for animals. And thank you so much, Governor, for taking the time out of your day. Thanks, Governor. Uh, somebody asked me today, do I own any pets? And I said, no, that's way too much responsibility for a house member. I, uh, and, then they, and then they asked me, well, why'd you move so many uh, pro-pet bills this year? And I said, well, you know, just because I don't own one doesn't mean that I share with my colleagues the utter disgust of people who would do cruel and inhumane things to animals and I'm proud to be a part of having passed these pieces of legislation. Mahalo. First of all, Governor, happy birthday. And just to let you know that one of our priorities in our office is elder abuse. So you will fall under the protection of the elder abuse. Sentence. That's telling the legislature, please be nice to him. <laughs> our society is defined by the extent that we go to protect our animals. And not only our animals, but to protect those who 
can't protect themselves, the elders, the children, and the animals. <clears throat> and I think, I want to thank the governor, I want to thank the, the legislature, senate, and the representatives for passing these laws that provide